Hey guys, Hayley here. So in today's video, uh, I want to show you guys something a little bit different from my usual content, uh, but I thought it'd be fun to share with you guys my first custom mechanical keyboard build. Um, so this whole mechanical keyboard thing has been like a hobby that I've really wanted to get into for a while now. Um, and so over the last two or three months, I've been picking out the parts that I need. I've bought them and they've just all arrived. So I'm going to put the board together. Uh, hopefully it's successful um, and see how I go. So before we dive into it, I did want to mention that uh, building mechanical keyboards is bloody expensive. It is like as expensive as collecting anime figures and it is as deep a rabbit hole. And there's a few reasons why I'm kind of interested in it. So first of all, I love the creative aspect of it, of picking out a board and a keycap set and the colors and everything um, so that all together you've got a really kind of cohesive and aesthetic design. I think that's really appealing to me. And there's a lot of art and creativity that goes into the design of all of the elements that you buy. The second part is that I type a lot. <laughs> um, I'm a software engineer, so I use a keyboard like all day, every day, and I do appreciate, you know, the finer typing quality. I like to try different ones out, see what I like. So I'm really curious about trying different switches, um, seeing if I like linears or tactiles and, and things like that. Um, it's stupid, but I do go like this like eight hours a day pretty much. So, you know, it's like, wearing different shoes and being like, oh, these sneakers feel good. I, I don't know, it's stupid. And thirdly, because I discovered that people make keycap sets for absolutely everything, and that includes anime. Um, there's probably an Evangelion set, and there's probably aesthetic as hell, and I probably want it. Um, I know there's a bunch of fate keycap sets, like they're ridiculously expensive, but they exist. And just knowing that makes me want to do like a, a board for my favorite character and, and, and it's all very exciting, <laughs> obviously. So I guess that's kind of why I wanted to get into this hobby and build my own board. Um, as for kind of what's involved in building your board, this is not a definitive guide, but uh, I basically have picked out a case. I have picked out my switches. I borrowed some lube from my friend to lube those switches so they feel very smooth. I picked up a plate. I've picked up some stabilizers to hold the longer keys in place. And I picked up the keycap set, obviously. So all of that uh, cost me about 320 US dollars. So yeah, expensive, right? For a keyboard. So my idea for this board is I really like when the board is frosty and RGB um, and I was kind of going for like a dreamy pastel magical girl mess let's go okay I did probably say this is my first time building a board so don't look at my experience as some sort of guide there's better guides on YouTube or on reddit but I, I thought it'd be fun to share it with you guys and introduce you guys to all this stuff you could spend your money on if it's something that interests you. So without further ado, put in some clips here. B-roll, let's get into it. Yeah! Alrighty, so I started out with lubing my stabilizers. Um, stabilizers are placed under the longer keys on the keyboard, like the space bar and the shift key, and they basically keep them from shaking or rattling. So I'm gonna lube them to make them a bit quieter and feel a bit smoother. So here I have some GMK screw-in stabilizers and I picked these up for $19. So the first thing I did was take them apart. So after taking them apart, I clipped the legs off of the insert so that it feels nice and clean when you press down. And then I used Crytox 205G lubricant to lube the inside of the clip and all four sides of the insert. Then I took some dielectric grease and I dipped the ends of the wires in. Then I put them back together again, then boom, I've got some pretty decently lubed stabilizers. I repeat this four times. So obviously people take lubing seriously when it comes to keyboards. So the next thing I did was to lube up my 65 switches. I picked up the very popular Holy Panda switches. These are some very popular tactile switches 
and these were off drop for $85 for 70 of them. First I used my cute little switch opener to pop open the switch. Um, I then did this 30 times. Afterwards I'm going in with the Tribosis 2304 and I lube the inside of the housing, so on the stem rails on the side and on the floor, and then I lube the stems. Here I'm deliberately not lubing the little itty bitty legs because I still want to feel the tactile bump. Then I'm going to bag lube all of the springs by putting them in a bag obviously and dripping in some drops of Krytox oil and I'm going to shake it all up until it's all evenly coated. <laughs> this sounds like I'm marinating meat or something. Then I put all of the switches back together which was very satisfying to do and then I'm done. Next up, I'm going to grab my stabilizers that I prepared earlier. This is sounding very much like a cooking show. Um, but I'm going to place these into the PCB. The PCB is the circuit that actually runs the keyboard. And this one I picked up from 1UP Keyboards for two main reasons. First, it has underglow RGB lights. And second, it is hot swappable, which means I can just plug my switches in as opposed to having to solder them in. Then I'm doing what's called the band-aid mod, which is basically sticking some band-aids down where the stabilizers are going to be hitting the PCB to dampen the impact and make it sound a little better. Then I'm just going to screw them in. Now it is time for the case, baby. This is what it's all about. Um, I've got this aluminium plate, which was $22 from KBD fans. And the keyboard case that I picked up was the Tofu Acrylic Frosted 60% case, and this cost me $88. I think it looks so good, I love how frosty it is, um, and I'm excited to light this up with the RGB. Right, now we're going to put it all together. So I popped the PCB in and it fits nice and snug, um, then the plate, and then I snap in all of the switches and I start transferring my lovely keycaps across. This beautiful keycap set is the DSA Astrolo Keys set, and this was designed by Sailor GH and Casado. And warning, if you follow them on social media, it will make you want to buy more cute keycap sets. This set was $95 from Drop. And ta-da, we're done! Uh, I immediately plugged it in to make sure that everything was working as expected, and luckily I did not have any issues. So that whole build took me maybe four to six hours or something like that. I was kind of doing other things during the day as well. Most of that was spent lubing the stabilizers and the switches. That took me like three hours at least. I was just binging Toy Story movies the whole day. Oh, Toy Story 2 is so good. <laughs> So I'm absolutely in love with how this board looks. I love the RGB of the case so much. I love the frosted look. Um, and uh, I actually, I love all of the different RGB modes that the, the PCB supports. Um, there's some really pretty ones in there. I also really like typing on the board. I think the board feels really solid. And I think that the holy pen switch is lubed. To me, feels a bit better than when I was using them before I lubed them. I probably overdid it with the lube on some of them because I don't quite get that tactile feedback anymore even though I was didn't lube the legs. Overall, I love how the keyboard feels. It's a pleasure to type on. I'll find any excuse to type uh, at my computer for the next few days. Um, there are some of the stabilizers that feel a bit iffy, like the backspace definitely needs a bit of work, but I've been a little lazy to deal with that just quite yet. Um, so I guess the question is, do I think that this entire experience was worth the $350 that I could have instead spent um, on an anime figure? And I kind of think it was. I already see this taking a chunk of the money I spend on anime figures away. Um, because I've already pre-ordered another keycap set. It's a Caro Caro keycap set. It's so cute. Um, and I've seen another Kobayashi's Dragon Maid set, which looks amazing. There's these other extremely expensive uh, GMK sets. There's a Saber Alter one. Oh my god. Uh, there's an Ishtar mash. Like, there's a Rem. There's a whole like Rem desk mat. Oh god. It's like a deep rabbit hole. Don't fall in if you like keyboards and like anime and 
have no self-control. Honestly, the fact that there is so much anime themed stuff, um, you know, in this hobby makes it so dangerous for me. Anyway, I, that's about all I had to go on about. I hope you enjoyed the video. Um, if you do want to learn more about building your own board, um, there's some amazing videos on YouTube that will talk you through the whole thing. Uh, and of course, the Mechanical Keyboard subreddit is a great resource as well. Yeah, it's another great rabbit hole to fall into for someone who likes anime and is a collector. It's terrible. But anyway, yes, thanks for watching again, and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye-bye! Where's the, the wave RGB mode?